Mark chapter 6. <clears throat> and he went out from thence and came into his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, don't say Saturday, never says Saturday. Matter of fact, this is the only day that's really given a name. Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And he and many hearing him were his thoughts. So many. So the very fact is that the proof of Jesus is that the Bible records many. The Bible records multitudes. He is a man who has been stated to be active in history. You can call these people before a judge, a righteous judge. To testify, we saw, we heard, we touched this man, Jesus. And we have seen his miracle that no man was able to do. We have heard him with our own ears. We've heard him teach. We've heard him preach. And he's, they're astonished. I mean, he's not getting up there with a fruity tooty message. He's up there. He's teaching in such a way that he is not equal to the religious people. He's not scholarly. From whence has this man these things? He is saying things of his knowledge only to be God. That the nation has been blind to. The very fact is, how do you know they've been blind? They have in their scriptures the prophecies of the Messiah to come. And he's standing right there talking to them. And they don't acknowledge him. They missed him. They rejected him as the prophecy said he, they would. They fulfill scripture, not even realizing they ful fulfill scripture. And what wisdom is this, which is given unto him, God's wisdom, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? So he has the ministry of speech, teaching, and preaching, and the mighty works, as it says, of the healing of his hands. No one's been like that. No one has shown up as that. Uh, in the Old Testament, you've had a few resurrections. You had a few healings. You had a few miracles by Elijah and Elijah, but not boom, one after another, after another, after another, where John says, the world can't contain all that Jesus done if you would write them down. It is remarkable that what we do and have available through the Holy Spirit written of Jesus and to be more of more that is not written that the entire nation of Israel who is this man let's get rid of him and you would say well you know we would have Jesus into our church you feel the same way because many of you out there you got the greatest church. God says about your church, you're, you're wicked, you're miserable, you're poor, you're blind, and you're naked. You would not like that. You would not appreciate Jesus in your church because you got the world's greatest preacher. That you will invite people to your church your pastor, your evangelist, but you won't invite Jesus to the gospel of Jesus Christ. More Christians will invite people 
to church than what Jesus said to do to preach the gospel. Is not this the carpenter? Okay, he's a carpenter. <clears throat> Big deal. They make all kinds of stories and kind of things. We don't even know. This is not the carpenter. Problem is, I believe it's Luke chapter 3, I think it is. When he's 12 years old, he's at the temple. He tells Mary and the people that are with him, the scholars and the religious of the time, I'm about my father's business and he's not in a carpenter shop. He's at the temple. What are you going to do with that? He's been adopted by the carpenter, Joseph. But the father of Jesus is God. The son of Mary. And it's funny how they don't mention Joseph. Is he gone by now? Because they say, is this not the carpenter? The son of Mary. No mention of Joseph. What happened to Joseph? No, no. The brother, brother, you know what that means? I got a bro well, I had a brother. He, he died. I had two brothers. Both of them are dead. They were born of our mother, Mary. I wasn't born of Mary, but I'm talking about Jesus. Born of Mary, Jesus. Born of Mary, James, Joseph, Judah, and Simon. We're not going to run that study. We've done it before. Go back to Matthew. I don't care what the Catholic Church says. You tell the Catholic Church to give me scripture. They say, well, you know, they call them brothers and sisters. Do you not in your church call each other brothers and sisters? Okay. But the context is. This is not the carpenter, which was the field of Joseph. It is not Mary, the, the, the wife of Joseph, the children, uh, the mother of these children. And it's often in the scriptures, James, Joseph, Judah, and Simeon, at least one or two of them are mentioned as the brothers of Jesus. Now, James is the New Testament form, the Greek, and if I can say that, the form of Jacob. There's Judah. There's Simon. If you would add an E, you would have Simeon. Are not his sisters, which one of them in the Bible names as Salome, which is feminine for Solomon, here with us. And they were offended at him. So, okay, Catholic Church says, so we can deify Mary, make her the perpetual virgin, as she would ever would be, that she would violate her marriage vows to Joseph. Well, Jesus, you know, Mary is a perpetual virgin. She never had any children. That's not what the scriptures say. And remember, the stance of the Catholic Church when it comes to the scriptures is the Pope and tradition override what the Bible says. If there is a conflict of interest of a question of something biblical, and the Bible says one thing, call no man your father, and the Pope and the church says another thing, father such and such, the Catholic church, I grew up Catholic, well, hence to the Pope, dope, dope Pope, and the church, rather than what the Bible says. And they even have their own version. And they, test, and they twist it. Don't tell me I grew up as a Catholic. My family were Catholic. And they were offended at him. You know what happened? Jesus came to, to your town. You know what? Jesus would come to your state. And you know what? They would be offended. They are offended at the truth. I, as a street preacher, have met many a Christian 
offended because I preach the Bible. And I don't know, they profess to be Christians. You're driving people away. That's not what Jesus would do, even though it would be, he did. You mean a prophet? The, the, the perfect man of all men, and you can't include Adam because Adam ruined his perfectcy. So the absolute 100% perfect man side of Jesus, who's God and man, the, the most perfect man ever, got people mad at him. They were offended at him. People get offended at the truth today. Man, you don't call me a she or he. I am a whatever garbage. I'm a trans whatever and I'm not I'm not a male, I'm not a female, and I'm uh -huh, just shut up. And they get offended because we say what is right. Just because you flunked English didn't mean I did. I went 12 years of English and, and two years of college with, with English. You're not going to erase my work of English because you don't want to learn English. But Jesus said unto him, A prophet is not without honor, but his own country, this is Nazareth, his own kin, family, his own house, brothers and sisters. And a lot of times for a true Christian to get into a ministry, God will move you. Because where you were, where you're at, they're not going to listen to you. Your parents really are not going to listen to you because they have been with you since you've grown up. They know your faults. Your grandparents know what you've done wrong. The neighborhood knows what kind of characteristics you got into, and you're going to try to tell us you're a Christian now, and you're Mr. Holy Roller, Mr. Perfect Werfick. <laughs> And you were the neighborhood terror. And Jesus wasn't like that. Jesus was the perfect child. And that his brothers and sisters were offended at him. I mean, I, I got offended at my brother all the time. My brother was, was ahead of school. Me, I followed behind. I had to be just like Frank and... A lot of times I went against my brother just as, hey, I'm me. I'm not going to get his grace. I'm not going to take the classes. I don't care he was in your class. This is me. I bet you had that attitude too. And he could there do no mighty work. Can God be restricted? Yes. Who can restrict God? Man. You look, look, here's God. Here's Jesus. They marveled with extreme amazement of what this man said and what this man did. And he couldn't do it to the fullest. There were people who walked away from the healing line. They were not healed. This is God manifesting in the flesh. This is one of those infirmities of the Bible to say, all right, here's the honest Jesus that many religions don't want to admit. There was failure in his ministry, not because of him, but because of man. He saved 
he laid a hand on few of the sick folk and healed them. A few. There were many that heard him, but a few. And he marveled, this is God marveling, because of their unbelief. Now, God now has, has witnessed in the human form of Moses and Aaron, of Joshua and Caleb. God in heaven never physically in the human form walked on two feet. He came as an angel, walked on two feet of this planet until after he was born. Never witnessed the unbelief that Israel had in the wilderness that Paul says they could not enter in the promised land because of unbelief. Here is God. Here is man, 100% God, 100% man. He is here. He is of the children of Israel. And he has witnessed what Moses, Aaron, Joshua, and Caleb has witnessed. Unbelief. They couldn't get into the promised land because of unbelief. And he could not heal everybody because of unbelief. You know what you would find in your churches today where everybody's welcome, all are welcome? He couldn't do much. He couldn't probably maybe do nothing in some of the churches because there's unbelief in the churches. There's all kinds of, uh, of silly doctrines. There's all kinds of silliness. There's all kinds of, you know, we got this Bible. We got that Bible. We got every Bible. Hula, hula. We got, you know, the pagan festivals. We got, you know, the face painting. We got the best victory Bible. We got the best like, preacher. We got the best church. We got the best grass. We got the most comfortable uh, pews. We get the most balloons and all stuff like that. But in Jesus, do we believe? Do we? How many churches are going to celebrate Jesus' birthday on December 25th? And the pastor will tell you, well, we know it's not Jesus' birthday. Then you have a birthday party for him on December 25th, though you know it's not his birthday? That's unbelief. Jesus ain't going to do much. And a lot of the singing churches, he's not in your church. He's outside. And he went round about the villages teaching. So he just leaves his hometown. And he called on to the twelve. We had a woman, twelve years of bleeding. We had a twelve-year-old girl die. Now we got the twelve being sent down. Notice twelve. Israel number, not 10, which is Gentile. He began to send them two by two. Six groups. Six is the number of man. That's what Revelation says. Gave them power over unclean spirits. He commanded. By the way, 12, that includes Judas. Judas was numbered amongst the 12. Judas had the greatest preacher. Judas had the works of the signs and wonders. Judas had the power of open clean spirits. Judas had the power of healing. And Judas still backslid and went to hell. And, commend, and commanded them that they should take nothing for their journey, save a staff only, only their cane, only their walking stick, no carry-on luggage, no backpack, no suitcases, don't load up the camel, don't load up the ass, have no ass and no camel, save a staff only, no script, now that's not like the movie script, that's a bag to carry things in. No backpack. That's what that is today. 
No tote bag. No bread. Don't bring any food with you. No money. All right, these are all males in their purse. In the Bible, the men had the purse, not the women. A man shall not wear what pertains to the woman. A woman shall not wear what pertains to a man. All right, it's a sin for a woman to have a purse. Where's yours, sir? And David cut the, the, the skirt of King, of King Saul. A man shall not wear what pertains to a woman. A woman shall not wear what pertains to a man. All right, it's, woman wear a skirt. That, that's sinful. Man, where's your skirt? I go tell you, I, I, I tell you, I dare you go blame a Scott to tell him about their kill is wrong. But be shod with sandals and not put on two coats. He said unto them, so you're going to take the bare essentials. You're going to rely on God alone. I guarantee they had frustrations. I guarantee they had problems. I guarantee they had shortages. In what place soever you enter in a house, not a church, there abide till ye depart from that place. Don't go house to house like they did in the book of Acts. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear you, when you depart thence, shake off the dust under your feet for a testimony against them. So they utterly reject God, Jesus, and the words. You walk out of that place, and you take the dust at the bottom of your shoes, sweep it off. I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable, Solomon and Gomorrah. City that God destroyed with fire and brimstone. Who are suffering in hell still at this point in time and today. Which would tell you that there are different degrees in hell. Because if, if, the, if the disciples did dust their feet, if they had been rejected, I would assume they had been rejected by some places, some houses, some cities or towns. If they dusted off their feet, no fire, no brimstone has been recorded. What would be so tolerable of Sodom and Gomorrah to these cities that reject the disciples and Jesus? Sodom and Gomorrah never had Jesus, and Sodom and Gomorrah never had the preaching of Jesus' disciples. The only warning that some, not all, was Lot telling his, his sons-in-law that there's going to be destruction. You got, you got 12 men, six groups of men going out into Israel, warning them of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, the judgment of God. The Messiah has come. Psalm Gomorrah never had that. Other places, Jesus said that the, the men of Nineveh will rise up and judge against his nation because they did not have the preaching of Jesus. They had the preaching of a madcap prophet who didn't want to preach in the first place and they received him and they believed him and they repented at his preaching there, there'll be there'll be people in places where the queen of sheba is going to give a criticization to her beliefs she didn't have the preaching of jesus she had solomon she believed 
America has had preaching. America has had carols. America has old time hymns. America has had the foundation of the Geneva and King James Bible preaching and a few good Holy Ghost true revivals. I ain't talking about this revival crap today. I'm talking about where we're great preachers of God, of the Holy Spirit. They would pray. Bars were closed. Theaters were closed. And they were turned into tree churches. And look, look where America is today. America is going to answer hard before God rather than the Chinese. Because not all China gets the gospel unless they're hindered by prison. Not all North Korea gets the word of God. When it gets there, not as much as going from coast to coast of America. And they went out and preached that men should repent. Didn't say they go out, they all come to synagogue, go to church, and don't say that. Say they should repent. Why didn't they preach the gospel? Because Jesus Christ hasn't died, wasn't buried, wasn't rose from the dead yet. They preach repentance. As John the Baptist was preaching. You know a lot of your churches don't preach today? Repentance. Go ahead and keep sinning. I mean, after all, Sunday our church is going to be sinning when we bring in that store. We were in, we were in a store today, and it had this big sign, He is risen. Oh, wow, well, cool. And big Easter eggs in the same basket. You foolish, unlearned church. Silly Christian. Easter and eggs is for Esther, not Jesus. You need to repent. You know what happens when people like me come up preaching, you know, it's pagan, it's wrong. Pastors get upset. Or, you know, we're gonna keep we're gonna do it anyway. Okay, fine. I ain't gonna force you. And they cast out many devils, not all. Who's the day? One of them is Judas. <laughs> Can you imagine when Judas ended up in hell? Some of those devils came up. What do you think you're doing? You took us out of that human, and here you are in hell with us right now. And probably he's going to raise up to be a false prophet. And anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them. So they did not lay hands on them. They put oil on them. They didn't have the hands of Jesus. You didn't see Jesus anointing them with oil. And you find this over in James chapter 4 or 5. It's anointing. 